Let's talk silk, the prized, pure, expensive kind. In ancient China, white silk was so revered that it often outshone its colorful counterparts. Why? White silk, with its flawless sheen and spotless purity, was the ultimate luxury fabric, reserved for the noble and elite. It symbolized purity, a high sense of ceremony, and even spirituality. Creating flawless white silk required meticulous care, since any little flaw would stand out like a sore thumb on this pristine fabric. Silk producers had to be extra cautious to maintain that perfect white, which, naturally, jacked up its price. As dyeing techniques developed, colored silks became more common and affordable, but white silk remained the top-shelf luxury. Now, let's get to the juicy part, the three-foot silk tradition in the Han Dynasty. High-ranking individuals who fell from favor weren't given a blade or a guard to help them out. They got a length of that coveted white silk to end their lives. The idea was that it was a privilege to end things with a royal touch. The most legendary tale of all? None other than Wu Zetian, the seductive concubine who was given the three-foot white silk to end her own life, supposedly to save the emperor's dignity. But let's be honest, if they had a say, they'd probably prefer to skip the honor and ask for a pardon instead. Then came the Qing Dynasty. The Manchu emperors weren't from the heart of China like their predecessors. They were northern warriors from the borderlands, roughing it out in harsh landscapes with hunting and fighting as top priorities. Culture? Probably not at the top of their list. But once they took over China, they had to make a show of their power and nothing says authority like designing an imperial wardrobe that reflects their unique Manchu identity and culture. The Qing court clothing adopted styles that mirrored Manchu traditions, emphasizing practical, functional attire suited to a more nomadic, horse-riding lifestyle. However, there was a little problem. The emperor had hundreds of consorts, and knowing who was who in the vast palace was no small feat heaven forbid he or his court officials mix up ranks and fail to bow deeply enough to the wrong consort. So, the Qing had a clever solution, a long, sleek piece of white silk cloth around each consort's neck. Not just a fashion accessory, this strap of white silk was embroidered with a color that shouted their rank. Each level had its own shade and decoration, so even if the emperor couldn't keep track, the silk would do the talking. The empress? She got the royal yellow, complete with dragon embroidery, to symbolize her closeness to the emperor. The imperial noble consorts, just a step down, flaunted dark blue or rich purple, with the freedom to choose any embroidery design they loved, while noble consorts donned green or deep blue. The consorts got by with medium green or light purple, and the lower-ranking concubines, known as pin, wore pink, light green, or plain white. Basically, the fancier the color and decoration, the higher the rank. This strict color code kept order in the harem and let everyone know their place. It was as much a social system as it was an aesthetic choice, ensuring that the emperor's many favorites stayed in line without the risk of any mix-ups. So, next time you see Qing Dynasty attire, remember, that white silk wasn't just fashion. It was a brilliant, multi-purpose system of control, tradition, and yes, a touch of ancient flair.